welcome back to the CCO Follow podcast. Uh, as always, uh, I'm here with Travis. My name is Arthur, and today we're joined with Pastor John. And over the course of the past month, we've been covering Bible study. We've we've covered um, the heart behind studying the Bible. We've covered the tools that help us study the Bible. And today, we're really excited to finally talk about the how. How do we study the Bible? The method. Uh, and I'm excited to have Pastor John on just because it's interesting to get to know our pastor in a little bit deeper way of how you study the Bible. How does a pastor of, of a church study the Bible? So uh, just to get started, uh, I want to ask Travis, you spoke uh, about the method and you gave a little bit of different kinds of methods. What is the method of studying the Bible? Are there different methods? W- what's that like? Yeah, I mean, when it comes down to it, most methods break down the same kind of functionality of uh, that most people describe as inductive. It's the one I'm sure John primarily uses where you have um, observation, interpretation, application, getting all the way from what you see to what it means to what it means for you. Um, there's obviously a lot of different steps you can do in between. There's a lot of different ways you can describe it, uh, a lot of different ways with simply just reading it. But um, that's kind of like a, a brief overview. And, you know, we really emphasize studying the Bible at Calvary. Obviously, mm-hmm. we do it on Sundays. Um, we have many Wednesday services where we study the Bible. Um, when we hold conferences, whether parenting or marriage, um, it's not just, oh, here's the 50 newest hacks. It's we open the Bible and we study the Bible. And so this is kind of a foundation of, of everything we do. And it's not even just from a, a pulpit position. We even do it uh, w- throughout the week. We have different Bible studies. They're all volunteer led. Uh, we have the two women Bible studies, the precepts and abide that meet mm. uh, in the morning and evening on Tuesdays. We have the men's Bible study. We have a co-ed Bible study. We have a bunch of people who individually study the Bible for themselves, who individually study the Bible to uh, teach in larger groups. Uh, we also have the marathon Bible study. Forgot uh, forgot that one. Sorry, Tony. Um, but we also have uh, you know a bunch of people who simply study the Bible. Yeah. And so uh, it is kind of a foundation of what we value um as as a church as honestly christians um but it is really a big part yeah and and just to kind of throw in there i think really our a church isn't just you know we come in here on sundays that's definitely a big part of it but it is those those bible studies it's those groups that get together and and just want to pursue god and just want to get to know who god is and there's so many different stories just in the people that I've met in our church that mm-hmm. have been really transformed simply because they decided, you know what, I want to study the Bible. I want to go join a Bible study. Some so, even saved. Yeah, they started going to the Bible study unsaved absolutely. and they, they realize as they're studying, like, yeah. there's something to this. <laughs> yep. So really is uh, foundational to us. But John, I want to ask you, I'm kind of throw <clears throat> this over to you here. Let's just throw it out there. How do you study the Bible? You specifically, Pastor John, how do you study the Bible? Well, the first thing I do is I open it up. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) Uh, I say that somewhat tongue in cheek, but it is amazing that we live in a country and a day and age where, um, at least in our context, uh, historically in my lifetime, now I realize it's changing as we sort of are now recognizing we're a post-Christian nation. The reality is that most people have a Bible uh, they may not understand it, and mm. uh, the more sort of we get away from uh, God and the Bible and church as a society, um, I, I don't assume anything about this or that people you know are familiar with the Bible. But but that being said, to this day, I think most people have a Bible, and and many have multiple Bibles, mm-hmm. and they just sit on their shelves or they're in a trunk or whatever, and they just they don't read them. And so for yeah. me. I think it starts with just acknowledging that we we have a Bible, and um, and it's important that we do read it. Yeah. You know, a lot of I've had people say to me, "God just doesn't really speak to me," mm-hmm. and I I love to I love to share with them. Well, he's he's already spoken, mm-hmm. and the the real question is, are are you listening? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And of course, God has reminded me of that truth many times along the way in my own. Um, faith journey with him in my own ministry and life and is John are you listening and so really fundamental to Bible study first and foremost is do you have a spiritual appetite Mm -hmm. God has spoken but do you care to know do Mm -hmm. you want to listen are you ready to learn Mm -hmm. and and be taught by him and so it starts there and and I just uh, to this day before I open the Bible I always begin in prayer and I just say Lord 
please nurture in me a spiritual appetite, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, cause I'm like anybody else, you know, I don't always feel real spiritual or always mm-hmm. feel like doing the things that I ought to do mm-hmm. that God says are good for me. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm grateful that he wants me to know him even more than I want to know him at mm-hmm. times. Yeah. But the fact is if I want to know him, part of how, where that's, you know, I recognize that is I, I actually, want to open up the Bible. And, um, and then from there, uh, for me, it just, it just starts by, um, you know, taking that sort of teachable spirit into the word and then just reading. And I, I try to read with a purpose. I, I, I approach, I approach reading the Bible a, a few different ways. So I read through the Bible in a year mm-hmm. and I've done that for decades and uh, that's just a good general habit to be in, mm-hmm. just to familiarize yourself with our story from cover to cover. Yeah. One of the things that I have found over the years is that um, people pick up bits and pieces along mm-hmm. the way. And so their understanding of God is very spotty. And mm-hmm. often they have misconceptions of God simply yep. because they yeah. haven't let God... Um, Fill in those gaps. Fill in those gaps, exactly. And so I would say uh, that's foundational. Again, it's not necessarily, um, you know, I'm not to sermon prep Mm -hmm. by any means, but I just want to be familiar with the Bible, the whole story. Um, I think it's Greg Kokel uh, who wrote a book. I love the book. Um, We went through it as a home group years ago, but it's just called The Story of Reality. Mm Mm-hmm. And I love that title because that really is what the Bible is. Mm-hmm. It's the story of reality. Yeah. And, um, and stories are awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we love stories. And uh, the question is, or the, the, the great thing about the Bible is, is it's a true story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's relevant for all people in all times, in all places. And so as I approach the scripture, I want to just have a familiarity of of it and mm-hmm. it takes a while like yeah. this is a big book yeah. there's a lot of information here mm-hmm. and so part of me i'm saying all this to say that once i have the the spiritual appetite and the desire to learn i just want to have kind of the thirty thousand foot view mm-hmm. of god's word yeah, sure. so i'm just yeah. familiar with yeah. it well and that's why you know i think sometimes people think of bible study as, as if it's different than any other subject in the sense of like how you uh, methodolog- method- methodologically wow. go about it yeah. because you have, you know, so much to cover and it's like, well, I'm mm. just going to dive into this one chapter. I'm really going to understand this chapter. And it's like, no, that's how you get really messed up theology. Like yeah. you go to any, you know, college anywhere, the first course you're going to take in science is not, you know, the really specifics. It's general science it's yeah. 101 yeah and yeah. like you even said thirty thousand feet there's the great as i know you know the great uh sermon series by skip heitzing whose birthday was just a couple days ago uh mm-hmm. where uh it's bible from thirty thousand feet just one yeah. sermon per per book um just really quick a, a quick sideways i was i was curious about you said open up your bible i'm presuming it's you meant physical yeah um ah. personally i use different styles for different purposes and i'm curious um between physical digital and audio yeah um do you only do one of them for which reasons would you do different ones it's a good question and of course in this day um i'm, I'm starting to feel like an old guy these days but um we can show you how to get your book on your uh, by one audio if you want yes exactly <laughs> Uh, so I actually, I do take advantage of technology. I think technology is really helpful and useful as long as it doesn't become a substitute for, um, you know, uh, me actually picking up this Mm -hmm. physical copy and reading Mm -hmm. through it. There's Mm -hmm. a number of reasons that I believe in reading a physical copy of a Bible. And one of them is, is just sort of fundamental that it's, it is the way we learn. Like we Mm -hmm. learn. Um, you know, we're visual learners, we're auditory learners, we're kinesthetic learners. Yeah. And so there's something about having a, yeah. a physical copy of a Bible. If you were to thumb through my Bible, you'd see that there's, there's probably not a page that does, doesn't have underline yeah. mm-hmm. and notes yeah. because there's something about just going through that, the way our brains work and the way we learn, yeah. the more we're interacting with something, the more it's just sort of, yeah. um, embedding itself in our mind. And Mm -hmm. so I do think there's something to be said for that. Now, these days, uh, for certain reasons, I, yes, I have a Bible app on my phone. I have my um, Bible software logos on my phone, on my iPad, on my MacBook. And, and because 
in certain settings, it's just, just easier. easiest to yeah. access what I'm what I uh, need to read. And uh, so that's kind of the, the quick mm-hmm. answer to that problem. I, I, yeah, I, no, I mean, that question. I, I want to say for me personally, when and I'm like, really, maybe I'm just like, OCD weird. It's about okay. it. Yeah. Uh, if I'm like doing just studying for myself, like if I really want to like read the word, it's going to be like physical. Like I have my Bible with me right there. Mm-hmm. But if I am like, I think when I use the digital Bible a lot is when I'm like, if, if there's something I need to look up real fast or something yeah. like it's just well, super, probably all your resources it, are digital. Exactly. So you don't have a yeah. physical. And then when I'm like prepping, like if I, if I ever have like a teaching or something and I'm prepping for that, it's actually like both. I have them like both mm-hmm. open because yeah. I feel like it's easier for me to like, I read, I read it, but then I'm like, if I need to like figure out like, oh, what is this, you know, does this mean this? And so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like looking it up on that, that yeah. digital. Stuff. Yeah. I do the same thing where, you know, I will always sit down and, and read it in my Bible, the text yeah. in my Bible. If I'm preparing a sermon, if I'm preparing even just my devotions, I, I like to read the physical copy yeah. of the Bible. Uh, but when I start diving into it and actually once I get past sort of just meditating on the word myself mm. and I want to go into, um, word studies Mm -hmm. then those resources are invaluable because it used to be back in the day when i started like we had big thick books it's like i'm thinking of like the strong's concordance yeah i mean that's a beast it's like three inches thick and it's tiny writing and you're physically looking up uh, you know uh words in in scripture and then you know finding out what they mean and it was boy it was it just took hours and hours and hours to to mm-hmm. really dive into a text now it's just a swipe and a click and it's yeah. boom Crazy, yeah. and and you've got just endless library of yeah. information uh that you can cut and paste and drop into your notes or whatever or even if you're um you know, sometimes in the context of just discipling another person mm-hmm. and yeah. teaching them something, I can click up and, and look something up. So yeah. for sure, but I do this too, where I'm sitting at a dentist office or at the chiropractor or whatever, waiting for my appointment and I can just pull up my phone and I can, I can look over my notes or I can meditate on a passage of scripture. So I love the fact that we have technology. Yeah. Um, but I, I really, what I cherish is the physical copy of my Bible. Yep. Mm-hmm. And um, there's just so much to that. I want to say one thing, and I'm curious if you guys okay. would experience have experienced this. So this is just a little bit anecdotal here. My son, years ago, he's an artist, and years ago, uh, when the iPad came out, mm-hmm. I can't remember how old he was. He was in high school. He was maybe like 14 or 15. He, um, as an artist, he was really looking forward to the iPad because of all the technology and the graphic art stuff he could do. And he wanted to get one of those pens that you could write. Well, now that's that's been out forever. But yeah. when it first came out, he was all about, I have to have this, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, and so he saved and he saved and he saved and he finally got enough money and he bought his first iPad and, and he was so excited to use it. But it was really interesting to me that he actually learned something about himself that surprised him. I realized I, I wasn't seeing him use it very often. And I asked him one time, I said, Caden, where's your iPad? Like, how come you're not using it? I thought huh. you really want, he goes, he goes, you know what, dad? I said, he said, I, I don't enjoy it. Hmm. He said, there's something about the physical medium of pen, pencil and charcoal and paper. Mm-hmm. And he said, and I just realized part of what I enjoy about yeah. art is the tactile nature of yeah. it and it's relaxing to me yeah. i don't draw because i want to be some kind of famous artist i draw because i just it's relaxing and enjoyable to me mm-hmm. and i realized i lost some of the meaning of why i did what i did because yeah. i'm on this slippery screen it just didn't feel the same yeah, yeah. and now i'm not saying that would be everybody's experience yeah. it was just an interesting observation that he stumbled upon yeah and so my point is connecting that with this i feel similar like i appreciate the technology and i mm-hmm. use it for certain things but man i've cried into my bible mm-hmm. yeah many times over the years i i have notes and insights that i write in the margins and there are precious moments that i have mm-hmm. with the lord in a quiet place and there's something about the physical tactile nature of this um that it's like i'm making a memory Mm -hmm. 
And so yeah. how, I don't know, did you guys have this happen where people ask for a particular, uh, a Bible question and in your mind's eye, you go to, you're thinking, okay, it's halfway down the page on the right mm-hmm. and there's a note next to it. You can go right there. And I believe it's because there is something about a physical copy that you're interacting with yeah. in a tactile way. So I don't mean to go on and on, but I just, I, there's something to that. And yeah. I, yeah. I don't No, They did, they did uh, studies years ago regarding uh, advertisements and um, the amount people were able to remember when it was on a physical thing rather than a digital one was vastly greater. Um, so, I mean, we know that there is stuff about tangibility and stuff like that, yeah. but I think you made an interesting point about um, Caden is that, you know, if, um, what are you going to enjoy most? Cause then that will cause you to do it more. And so, um, yes. you know, I think obviously there's, there's benefits to physical. Um, personally, I, I learned uh, a while ago is like, I really like the margins. So I specifically got a physical Bible that had larger margins. Mm-hmm. Um, but whatever, whatever things you learn about yourself, leverage them. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. if you find out you like margins, great. If you find out you like this thing or that thing, whatever's going to help you want to do it more, yeah. like, why not That's use a good that? Point. That's a really good point. And I have found, like, I have a preference when I'm looking for my, I'm kind of a Bible nerd, right? Like, I have a lot of Bibles. Um, I don't need more Bibles, but I like certain Bibles for certain reasons. Yeah. And I'll go through these seasons where, like, right now, I just got to... I got a Bible that's um, one column, you know, it's it's like a book more. Yeah. I never thought I would like that. I like my columns and I then say, I like my painful. little cross reference in the middle and, and my commentary at the bottom. And I, I'm so it's it's true that I feel more motivated to read something that is a pleasure in yeah. some mm-hmm. way to yeah. read and interact yeah. with. I find it useful and helpful. Yeah. yeah. And, and just before we would move on, I want to say this too, because what you were talking about, how you like think when you're remembering something, you're thinking where it is mm-hmm. in the physical. I have uh, like a page in Corinthians, like first Corinthians, uh, you just X'd it all out six. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny because it's, it's when we're, it's what it, uh, Paul is talking about the gifts of the spirit mm-hmm. and the, and, and what that looks like. And I remember when I was in, uh, in college, it was like, I was back for summer break and I was like diving deep into like, okay, what is this whole like speaking in tongues thing? Like, is this real? And I, so I, that I was going there like referencing and it was me and my buddy and we were like distraught over this because it was like, we didn't know what we believed and we just wanted to figure it out. And so we're literally standing there reading it in the pouring rain. And so now that page is like all like crinkled from the rain. So it's like, it's like in, in, within the the page it's like you flip through one page you're like okay Mm -hmm. and then it's like all of a sudden it's like this like super wet dried and that's 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 so now you can say to your wife molly bring me the parchment yeah (laughs) yeah no No, but it does build memories i have the very front of my bible like right inside the cover there was this kid uh from our church of florida who just took just color pencils to it Ugh. and by the time we caught him it was just you know a bunch of scribbles because it's like two-year-old and it was like all right, it's staying with me now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so so that was definitely a big tangent. Thank you, Travis, for Sorry. that one. Um, <laughs> so let's let's kind of dive back into your process here. So you you open up the Bible, and you you mentioned a lot of things like meditating on it, yeah. uh, praying beforehand. When it comes down to like you actually saying, okay, I'm I'm reading through. Do you read like a chapter at a time? Do you read like a book at a time? What is that process like for you? The whole Bible at a time. Because you said you know you cover the whole Bible, and it's it is a long process. But what is like going deeper into that? What's that process like for you? So I'll I'll try to do this as briefly as I can. So first of all, there is value in rapid reading, Um, and so there's the discipline of just reading through the Bible. And, and clipping along. Yeah. And it's okay that I'm not getting everything. I'm not meditating on it. I'm just reading. And I do that every year. So I'm always going through the whole Bible. It helps you connect the dots. Mm-hmm. It helps you. You start cross-referencing in your mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bible, inter- Scripture interprets Scripture. Mm-hmm. So by doing that, by reading the whole story and having the 30,000-foot view, there's a benefit to that in your own personal life. There's a benefit 
to that when you're counseling or discipling others. There's a benefit to that when you're teaching mm. and uh, and preparing sermons because you have this library of knowledge because you've consumed it all at one mm-hmm. time or another. Yeah. And so I just, but there's a lot there, so it's good to do it every year because it's it's going to take you a lifetime to really digest mm. the content. And so there's rapid reading that that comes into play when I'm doing sermon prep because. Um, oftentimes uh, it helps me know what what cross references do I want to throw up there to 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 support the point that I'm making in Mm -hmm. this particular passage and so there's that there's devotional reading where I'm I'm slowing down and I might read just a verse Mm -hmm. I might read a passage I might read a chapter but I'm it's typically a smaller amount Mm -hmm. and and then I'm just kind of chewing on it you know, and, and I'm processing it and trying to get all that I can out of it. By the way, with regard to um, meditation, I know the classic inductive Bible study method is is observation, interpretation, application. And I include in that meditation. Mm-hmm. And the reason is because if I go through the process of observation and, and even interpretation and I jump too quickly to application, mm-hmm. then I sometimes I can just be in, in the mode of checking boxes and yeah. just, I'm, I'm jumping yeah. too quickly and I'm not been prayerful and thoughtful about something mm-hmm. by meditating. It allows the Holy spirit to really camp on maybe a particular issue mm-hmm. in my life. Yeah. And if I'm too quick to just be going through the motions, mm-hmm. I might be doing things in yeah. sort of a behavior modification mindset. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just going to be a good Christian and I'm just going to do this because the Bible says do this, but my heart isn't really transformed yeah. yet. It hasn't changed. Yeah. And so I'm doing it for the wrong reasons. So I, I tuck in there meditation, mm-hmm. by the way, with regard to this method, when you first start out, it is sort of a sequence. Mm-hmm. You start yeah. with, with observation people places things what do you see if it's a narrative for example in the gospels you're going to see people places things and so you you notice uh, those things and it's um and and with the interpretation now you're starting to what does it mean what does it mean what does it mean um but there's something about meditation that allows me to go just a layer deeper Mm -hmm. and so by the time i get to application um, I'm, I'm really ready for that. Mm-hmm. But what happens over time, I started to say, is it's not so much sequential as it's simultaneously you're doing all of these things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The more you practice this, the more you realize I'm making observations and interpretations pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. And, and you can do that because over time you get better at doing that because yeah. you just simply have learned yeah. right, what it means. Yeah. And so... So there's that. Um, after I've so after I've read the text, and by the way, I have to say this: it's so elementary, but I can't believe how many people don't do this. They read a text once or twice, and then they're frustrated because it's it they don't understand it. Mm. Yeah, I tell people when I read it, if I'm preaching on a text, I read that text twenty to thirty times, at least ten times. Mm-hmm. I I read it yeah over and over and over for the simple reason that you pick up more information. Part of the reason we don't understand something is we just haven't really paid attention enough. I can promise you if, if you read a a verse or a a paragraph 10 times, you'll be shocked at how much you pick up by the second, third, fourth, fifth time you're reading it. You're like, man, I never saw that before. And this, it becomes motivation because you're getting something out of it now. Yeah. You're actually learning. And part of the reason people don't aren't motivated to keep studying their Bible long term as a habit of life, they don't get anything out of it. Yeah. Why don't they get anything out of it? Because they're not putting much into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. yeah, I think it's probably like most things in life where you go through seasons where you're continuing to put an effort, but you get plateaued for a little bit. And then something, you know... Uh, you, you notice something you hadn't before. So I think sometimes people can be stuck at those plateaus too. But yeah. in general, yeah, the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out. I mean, that's pretty much the rule of all of life, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely, I, I think about the difference in just the teaching versus, you know, just studying. There really isn't much of a difference. It's more of the, 
at least for me, it's when I'm studying, it's where I study and what I'm studying at that time can look, you know, very different. And it's, there's never really like, well, I, I, I know I should be studying this specific book. It's not like that. But when I do it, when I'm preparing for a teaching, it is more specified. And so I feel like, and I, this is totally, I feel convicted right now because as, as you're talking about this, I, I oftentimes put a little bit more emphasis into studying and really thinking about all these things more like, you know, with, with, with greater, uh, focus when I'm studying for teaching Mm -hmm. versus when I'm not. And I, I just, I just feel like I'm being convicted in like, no, it's not really the best. Like it's great for the teaching, but it's not really great for me. Like I'm not, I'm not actually, I am just kind of going through the motions. Mm -hmm. And so what my question to you guys, you guys are teachers, you teach a lot. Um, how do you, how do you diff, I guess, how do you go about that in a way that is healthy? How do you do that in a healthy way? Well, I think sometimes people, when they're teaching, there's this heightened sense of, I better get it right. Cause other people are depending on me to get it right. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I totally sympathize with what you mean of like, when you're studying for yourself, sometimes it can feel like there's, you know, well, it's just me. <laughs> like it's not this important. Uh, so sometimes I, I don't think it's necessarily good to, uh, study with others in mind in the sense of, um, uh, you know, as if, uh, you're going to be doing something on their behalf or, uh, or anything, but in the sense of, um, it brings that certain level of, um, urgency to get it right. Yeah. Um, I think if you just like, well, if I was going to teach this to someone, I need, I didn't have that mentality. Like if I had to teach this tomorrow and I think most people, you know, you ask them, you, you read in a small group, you're like, Hey, we just read this paragraph. What does it mean? And most people will just say, no, I don't know. Yeah. But those exact same people, um, I've put them, whether it be for, um, you know, high school or young adult camps or whatever, been like, Hey, I want you to share something. And they're like, okay. Mm-hmm. And they get serious. Yeah. And whatever it takes for you to get serious, whether it's okay, I have to study right now as if I'm going to teach this, or I'm going to study right now. Um, you know, to teach myself and whatever like mindset you have to be in is just a mindset that matters, a mindset that says this matters. And so I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. work on this. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And it, and it's a tendency that when you are teaching on a regular basis to approach the Bible as though, um, you're reading it for someone else. And I often, well, from time to time, I will even say from the pulpit, don't listen to this sermon for someone else, mm-hmm. you know, Listen to this for you. Now, it may be that someone else could benefit from it. I'm not saying don't share. Yeah. yeah. I'm saying let your primary motivation be, yeah. God, what do you want to say to me? I'm here yeah. to be fed. I'm here to learn from you. And so yeah. when I approach Bible study, I I try to remember that, that Lord, you're just speaking to me. Part of the reason that um, it's convenient to listen for someone else is because I may actually be avoiding God. Mm -hmm. I don't want to listen for me. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a nice cop out to be like, I, I'm not saying I've ever done this a hundred times. I'm just saying that, uh, yeah, (laughs) you know, I, I, if I'm being honest, there are times when I realize now I I don't, that's not a a way of life for me because Mm -hmm. I really do want to, you know, be open to what the Lord's teaching me. But what I've found is sometimes it's hard to get into that pulpit. And I, I will often say that, that, you know, I'm not preaching from some ivory tower here. Like all of you need this and I don't. It's hard to get in the pulpit on some days simply because the Lord's dealing with me on that issue. And it's astonishing to me how many times that happens where the Lord's dealing with me on something and and he's saying, you, you're not, you can't go out there and preach and rightly represent me. Mm-hmm. If you're fighting me and resisting me and you're not walking in the light. Mm-hmm. And so we've, we've, part of the beauty of Bible study is it, it helped. We learn to trust God. Mm-hmm. We learn to confess. We learn to repent. Yeah. We learn, you know, that God loves us and, and, and we can, you know, really believe what he says. And you know what I mean? There's just mm-hmm. so much going on and, and he starts with me, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and so um, I think that, um, do you want me to touch a little bit on where I go after, 
um, or kind of in this process. Sure, yeah. And in a second before we do that, if you don't mind if I do yeah, another yeah. side yeah. tangent, um, you, you mentioned a little bit ago about filling in the gaps by getting the big story yeah. and by reading through. And I know I've over the years had um, different people get saved as adults and feel like, I don't even know where to start. Because they're like, yeah. I can read the whole Bible, but it meant almost nothing. And so generally what I've pointed people to is... Um, honestly kid resources which can sound demeaning and i always warn them i'm like this is not meant to be demeaning it's just honestly there's nothing good for adults like the bible um, project or something well yeah i mean that's obviously another category but i mean um just even to be able like like the jesus storybook bible or other yeah. kid resources because they cover the story so well where it's like you know mm -hmm. because you know we're, we're teaching through galatians right now with the young adults and in two chapters we had abraham and his promise and then isaac and uh, or uh uh Ishmael and Ishmael and Isaac and it's like okay if you have no context you know there's the classic example of someone teaching on Saul but they mix up King Saul with Saul of the New Testament mm -hmm. um, and you don't you don't want to do that <laughs> you don't no. want to have you want to have a, a a knowledge of the Bible that may not even come from just simply reading it because there's just so much to digest are there any like tips you give for people who got saved later in life where it's like as you're also where do reading you start? yeah as you're also yeah. reading through the whole Bible yeah. They've checked out Bible Project, but even that doesn't cover a decent amount of stories. You know what I mean? It covers more uh, themes. It doesn't get into mm -hmm. too many of the classic stories. Like, uh, like I think it covers Noah, but I don't know if it covers like Samson or covers Gideon. Like, a, you know, um, any any suggestions that you've found over the years um, outside of just honestly kid resources, maybe? You know, it it depends on the context. I think kid resources are great um, for parents mm -hmm. because just like they're great for Sunday school teachers. I can't tell you when I was in children's ministry, how many times, um, I had teachers come to me and a little bit bashful because they, they were afraid to admit it at first, but, but they were so excited about what they were learning. They couldn't help themselves. And they just said, you know, pastor John, I, part of what I love about teaching Sunday school is how much I'm learning. Like yeah. I go through these lessons and I realize. I didn't know these things. Yeah. I'm getting my questions answered. That's cool. Yeah. And, and so they're learning right along yeah. with the kids. Yeah. And, uh, so I would say amen to, to your point that, um, there's, th there are times when that's a great suggestion to people. And I, I consistently see grownups are just in a bigger body, but a lot of times yeah. they're childlike in their knowledge mm -hmm. and their ignorance of the yeah. truth. They just don't know. Yeah. And, but they're afraid to admit it because yeah. they are grownups yeah. and maybe they've even gone to church for many years, yeah. and, but they don't know what they ought to know. Yeah. And so I do think those, those can be good, good resources. I think today there's no lack of good resources mm -hmm. where you have to be careful though. There's almost too many. Well, yeah. you can get, you lost in it all one yeah. but you there's also a lot of bad resources yeah theologically and so if you don't yet have a real um firm foundation in doctrine and mm. theology then you can come across stuff that looks really awesome but mm -hmm. it's it's decidedly not awesome yeah. and and so i don't say that to make people fearful i'm just saying it's good that if you're new to Bible study that you just ask a, a trusted, mature yeah. Christian friend yeah. and say, Hey, what do you think of this resource? Yeah. And if they're like, yeah, this is great. Or eh, it kind of gives me some red flags. Then, you know, there, there are plenty of good resources. So it's okay to let some things go yeah. and, and be discerning in that yeah. process. Which, I, I, which that's a good thing to note is that among Bible study, um, this is a personal relationship between you and God, but it's not just you and God and that's it. Yeah. Like he, he put us in the community for a reason. You know, even Galatians 2, like Paul, he, he starts out Galatians saying, I wasn't taught this by a man. It's not like someone convinced me of this. This is by God. But then Galatians 2, he talks about going to Jerusalem with the pure intention of making sure that he hadn't been teaching the wrong gospel, making sure that what he understood was actually right and going to the apostles and basically being like, did I do this right? <laughs> like, yeah. Is this what yeah. it means? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we shouldn't be doing this in a vacuum. Yeah, I, I definitely, that's what I wanted to bring up is, is it, this is, is studying the Bible and getting to know who, who God is, isn't just a one-on-one -on -one thing. Mm -hmm. It is like, this is why we have discipleship. Like you brought up like the young, you know, young Christian as an adult, where do you start? Well, I, I think all those things are really helpful, but I also think like, <clears throat> man, that's the opportunity for us to 
be the church in building relationships with those people and bringing them in and saying, hey, well, why don't you come to, to my Bible study or, or hey, let's let's go through this together. And mm-hmm. like those are the opportunities that that God gives us. And it's like, man, we're just, we got to be faithful to this. So I yeah. just think about this, just that is the the Christian life is, is discipling and coming alongside one another. Mm-hmm. So I want to, I want to say this too. And, uh, you know, cause I, I think it, it's important for people listening, you know, whenever we look at the subject of Bible study and especially if it's coming to a pastor and saying, well, how do you do it? I, I want to make sure that people understand that Jesus didn't recruit from the local seminary Mm -mm. when he was calling his disciples. And one of the things that I think is really um, just wonderful about the Calvary Chapel movement in particular is it made room, the ministry made room for people like me that hadn't gone to Bible college or seminary. Now I've been pastoring for almost 30 years and um, and I just didn't, I didn't have the opportunity to have that background. But what I had was just a Bible and I was in a healthy church body. And so I saw the Christian life being lived out. I had people I could go to and ask questions. I watched, I learned, I studied and God equipped me. The issue is if you're going to be able to make disciples who make disciples, if you're going to be able to teach others what you've learned, you need the Holy Spirit and you need the word of God and you need the people of God. Yeah. That's it. You don't need all the resources out there. They're a bonus and they're a supplement. And I'm saying, take advantage of them. I do certainly, but I didn't, I didn't have all of that before I started ministering to people. Mm -hmm. I had Jesus. I had the Holy spirit. I had his word. And I just had a desire to make disciples, to share with other people what Jesus had has shown me. Mm-hmm. And what happened is he just opened up doors of ministry. Before I ever became a pastor, I, without even knowing it, God had given me a pastor's heart. Before I ever preached my ser- first sermon, I had been preaching the word of God my whole life since I became a Christian to my friends, to my family, to people that I met. I just, and all I was doing was talking about Jesus and the truth that I learned from meditating on his word. And I I think that needs to be said because we have to ask the greater question. We're talking about Bible study, but the other question is to what end? Mm -hmm. Like, why do we do this? Is this just some religious hoop we jump through because it's what good Christians do or it's what God commanded? No, no. We do it because this is God's chosen revelation. This is how he revealed himself to the world. And he said, now you go into the world and mm-hmm. you teach them everything I've taught you. Mm-hmm. And, and so it's our, it's our food and uh, for our soul. And as we, man, I, I, I don't know about you guys. I mean, I, I jokingly say this from time to time, but I can be very evangelistic about street tacos. Yeah. You know, I've, I've tasted and seen that they are good. And I've tasted and seen that the Lord is good. And I go and tell everybody about mm-hmm. California tacos or whatever. I tell everybody about what I've learned from scripture. And I don't wait until I'm an expert. And I don't mm-hmm. put on a burden on myself that God hasn't put on me to know the Greek and the Hebrew and all of this before I share what he's taught me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't mean to, I mean, I feel like I'm kind of preaching right now, but I'm just, does this resonate with oh, you guys? Because I, I think it's really important to include that in this conversation yeah yeah well and the the idea that what you're sharing is him like you said i tasted and saw the lord is good and so i told other about the lord yeah and that kind of reminds me of how jesus told the the pharisees you know you search the scriptures for in them you think you have life like you weren't searching so that you could have this nugget of like oh i figure out how the world works and let me tell you yeah. It, a, that's not true, and B, it's not very fulfilling. Like instead, it led you to a person, God Himself. Right. And because I, I guess to finish that quote, where He says, "You search the scriptures for in them that you think they have life, but it's they that speak of Me." Yeah. And you know, you in your study, you find more of God, you find more of Jesus, and 
that propels you to say, Hey, I found more of Jesus. Let me share him with you. Yeah. yeah it, it, for, for me, it's, it's always, and I've said this before on one of the podcasts, but for me, it's like, if like, I, I believe in, in God, I believe that's good uh, in what Jesus did on the cross. <laughs> Even and, Satan believes yeah, in trouble. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, I believe that. And, and I, it, part of that belief is like, man, if, if this, if the creator who created me, who created everything wrote, Th- these words like i want to read those words because i want to know what the creator is is saying and and i just think there's there's always going to be ups and downs right but it's really the the word of god for me at least is just this it, it's it's like food to your soul but it's it's like if i don't eat I'm going to starve and I'm going to die. Like I want to eat the word. You know, I I want to get to know who who this creator is who loves me because I want to love him even more than I do now. And so I just think, man, studying the Bible and and what we we talked about this in the podcast now, it's it gets me fired up because it is it's like that good tasting thing. It's like I just want people to understand how I understand it just even a little bit, you know, and and I just I get excited. I'm I'm thankful that we have these conversations. I'm thankful that I get to know you know my pastor more. I get to know my friend more. And um, I I don't know where I'm going with this, but I am very um, very passionate about just spreading the word because it's. it's I want to I want to interject something with you, Arthur. That so there's the spiritual appetite. We 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 can't grow if we're not fed. Yeah. But we also need to exercise, and this also gets back to the question of. To what end? Like, why do we do this? Uh, it's it's so that we can actually walk out the obedience and love mm-hmm. that Jesus commanded. Yeah, and it's so that we can actually um, apply the principles of wisdom uh, in daily life. And this also, just like when you discover a new truth, it it makes you hungry for more. When you walk it out and practice it and then see the results, that also makes you hungry totally. for more. Like mm-hmm. the reason people say, do you ever get burned out in ministry? And I can honestly tell you, I'm, I, I've had discouraging days. And, um, but I would, I would say that I don't, I don't get burned out um, because, um, and I'm not saying that like, that could never happen to me because that does happen. And maybe I have been and just didn't realize it. That's sure. possible. Yeah. But I don't think of my ministry and my life in those terms. And I think the reason is God has been very merciful to me in this process of studying his word by helping me to see that it's not just, as I said, a spiritual hoop to jump through. I think that I would burn out on. But the fact that it's actually a relationship, yeah, and that relationship is alive and growing and meaningful, and then how that impacts other relationships that are alive and growing and meaningful, mm-hmm. you don't that enriches your life. You don't yeah. burn out on that stuff. And so, why am I so fired up about preaching the the word and teaching the word to others? Why am I so fired up about meeting new people and connecting them in church and with with Christ? Because I've seen lives changed. Mm-hmm. My life has radically changed. Yeah. My family's life is my legacy mm-hmm. has changed because of the word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's something that's worth being excited about and sharing mm-hmm. with other people. And so when I'm going through the process of observation, interpretation, meditation, application, it's not just an academic exercise. It's nurturing a relationship with Jesus. And then sharing it with other people. Again, it's not so I can be spiritual and check a box and get a notch on my belt. It's because the relationships matter. And, and these are things of eternal value. And so the, the resources that I go to, commentaries, lexicons, dictionaries, all of these things that increase my knowledge. The Bible says knowledge can just puff up. Mm. But... But love edifies. So if this doesn't isn't worked out in an exercise of love mm-hmm. for God and for others, then it's just been a, a waste of time, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, from God's point of view. Yeah. 
when I think an important note, like you compared it to exercise and like, you know, the getting results from it, um, whether it be nearness to God or changes in your life or just changes in who you are, um, you know, it will make you want it more. Um, that's only true if we actually recognize where those changes came from. Yeah. And it's important to, uh, you know, just to note that it's, you know, we need to acknowledge when God has done something in our life. Yeah. Otherwise, we won't attribute the right thing. You know, if you start exercising and eating right while also taking a sugar pill yeah. and, you know, you're just like, well, it's the sugar pill. It did all these things. And so you stop the other things because you're like, this is the only thing I need. Um, you know, so how often in life do we attribute things to our own doing or just a chance? I mean, the amount of times, you know, we are or at least people I know have attributed stuff to chance. <laughs> yeah. When it's like, can't we give God a little bit of credit here? <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny. I think about um, I was having a conversation with my wife a couple weeks ago, and it, we were she had like brought up something like a something that God had done, and without like I don't know why I said this just out of the blue, but like she was talking to me, and I said I, I was like. Well, God uses rocks. And I said it very, like, matter of fact. Like, God uses rocks. And she looks at me. She's like, well, what? And and I just, I, like, kind of snapped out of it. I was like, oh, yeah, like, God uses rocks. Like, this is a rock. You got to defend yourself now. You know, you got to, you <laughs> know. die on this hill. <laughs> yeah. And I was, I was like, you got to remember, like, these are, like, remembrance stones, you know? Mm. Like, let's remember this. Like, mm. like, let's get this, like, let's remember it. Because the things that God does he wants us to remember so that our faith can be built up and we can be encouraged. Well, and so, it's like the song we sang on Sunday. We were talking to the worship team, like how many songs we sing that people may not know the words or understand what they're singing. Where it's like, here I lay my Ebenezer, um, hither by thy help I come, like yeah. in come thou fount. Ebenezer is literally referring a to a monument. Yeah, yeah, a monument of rocks to say. So we this need to is... say where that comes from. Because okay, people yeah, listening yeah, to this, sorry, sorry, going, I'm good, still yeah. on track. Like what a, so yeah. you're talking about stones of remembrance. Yes. And Joshua. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And God so, uses rocks. God uses rocks to remind us of past uh, his, his past faithfulness, which it, which is two things: one, recognizing that God was the one who worked to begin with, yeah. but then two, not forgetting. Yeah. Because that's because that's part of the problem. Sometimes we just have a really short memory span where it's like, oh yeah, we recognize it today, and then tomorrow we freak out and we say, where is God now? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm kind of intrigued by where this just turned because we you all know, are. The, <laughs> the, the I think it's a valid point that another reason we study isn't just for the people that God's put in our life today, but the people who will be living tomorrow when mm-hmm. we're gone. And in that story of Joshua, the, you guys know it well, but Those as, rocks as the Lord them. brought the children of Israel across the Jordan into the promised yep. land, and, and, and it was an object lesson. He said, I want you to, you know, there are 12 tribes, and each of them take a stone, and, and they made this monument. And he said, and here's why I want you to do it. I want you to do it so that when your children in the generations to come walk by this, and they see that and say, Daddy, what is that? You can say... Let me tell you the story of the faithfulness of God. And and they know their roots, their spiritual heritage. Mm-hmm. And so it's another principle that whenever I'm studying scripture and doing the homework of understanding what this means and how it applies and in my life, I recognize it's not just for me. It starts there, but and it's not just for the people um, you know, that I minister to on a Sunday from the pulpit. It's, it's for the people closest to me. It's for the next generation. Mm -hmm. We're passing this on. And that's why we need to be disciples who make other disciples, because we're sitting here today having this conversation because 2000 plus years ago, or even before that, God was inspiring his word to be written through the apostles and the prophets Mm -hmm. and ultimately Jesus. And, and, and so that we could hear the message of salvation. Yeah. And um, and so, as it's been said, Christianity is always one generation away from being extinct. Yeah, yeah, <sighs> yeah. People just not knowing God. Yeah. I don't know if I've uh, hit the target at all here on yeah. how I study the Bible, but this. I is, think this has hopefully been there's yeah. something here. That... It, and th- this has been great. Um, I, I, we're going to kind of wrap up now, but um, John, I, I really do appreciate you being able to to come on and just talk about stuff stuff that you already know, but stuff we're passionate about and. Mm-hmm. And Travis, um, this this entire month, uh, you know, looking at what it's like to study the Bible, it's it's been important, and I, I hope that you guys, as the listeners and the people watching, uh, I hope you get just as much as we got out of it or more. Um, and and I really look forward to uh, continuing this this podcast, continuing to build up these resources. And um, Travis, I don't know if you is kind of on the spot, but 
maybe you can you can tell everybody you know where where can they find some of these resources what have we kind of put together yeah so i mean they're on the website if you go to our uh, resources drop down menu there's one that says uh, follow resources and on there is just a bunch of topical things they're divided between uh, things such as kind of fundamentals things like baptism things like um, just start to follow class uh, know God and then there's kind of Christian living where we have stuff like prayer and fasting uh, we have things like parenting uh, and then we have some kind of additional resources like the freedom from pornography month that we had um, and apologetics and things like that and so you can find all those um, on under the the resources drop down menu under follow resources uh, and that has not only the podcast but different teachings we've had uh, websites books different resources like that yeah and so so join us please join us and continue to um, participate with us as as we you know follow along with with the follow podcast and uh, next week actually we're talking about upside down kingdom mm-hmm. and what what does that look like to to be uh, compared you know we live in this world but we're not you know we're not members of that society anymore we're members of of god's kingdom and so what does that look like so uh next week that's what we're talking about um thank you so much for for hanging out with us listening and watching Um, we really do appreciate it and we hope that you can share and follow as we follow jesus together so thank you and god bless